All right, so today's video has a loose script and it's more like a classic tangent. The background footage is purely there for background with perhaps some footage to support what I'm saying, but likely not. This is by far one of the topics I talk about most on my stream and something I voice my displeasure with often. Frankly, I find competitive League of Legends to be one of the most boring aspects of the game. The kicker is that none of this really applies to solo queue, League of Legends, just the competitive aspect. I also find League more fun to play in the long run than its competitors, although I definitely feel it has more frustrating aspects to it. Again, this is just the competitive aspect and its severe lack of champion diversity. It is frankly just kinda sad at this point how very few champions are picked in League in comparison to its competitors. According to a Reddit post the other day, which you can find some sources scouring that Reddit thread, Dota 2 has had 92 of 111 heroes, 94 now, played in their competitive majors, while League has had 64 out of 131 champions picked. That is a comparison of 83% versus 49%. The reasons for this are very real and very glaring as well. League has champions that are far too similar to each other and have very similar strengths, so professional players are just encouraged to pick the ones with better numbers. The issue with homogeny has been a problem for a long time, and I've talked about it in past videos. While no champion is a one-for-one -one copy of another, plenty of champions can accomplish similar things to other champions in perhaps just slightly different manners to the point where you just picked whoever's better at the moment. The other issue is one that I've spoken about extensively and painfully. Riot has systematically worked to weaken or remove all total counters in the game. There are some champions in League that can be used to counter or deal with an opposing champion, but it isn't an absolute one, it's just a soft counter. The difference is massive when you compare it to Dota 2. In Dota 2, there are some heroes that literally make other champions unplayable, while in League, you can just work around them and make it irrelevant or... Or the counter is just so weak there's no chance they'll even bother to play that against you. I personally find it really depressing when a counter pick isn't a good choice because a better champion, a straight up like a tier 1 overpowered champion, is just flat out better rather than someone who would have absolutely countered some other champion. There are actually very few reasons to pick any niche or situational champions over someone who's just concrete at the moment. The other issue is a really sad one. League has tons of absolutely dead champions that are simply garbage level with little to no merit. Some champions can be strong in solo queue, in fact very very strong, and even god tier in solo queue, but they are absolutely ignored and pointless in competitive. You can see this in the win ratios for champions in solo queue, where some champions like Volivare have like 55% win ratios, Skarner have 54% win ratios, and stuff like that, but they're not going to be picked in competitive because when it comes to organized play, they get crushed. It's just a huge disparity between the balance of solo queue and competitive, and what's actually going to be played. There is also a very stark comparison between the tiers in League and in Dota 2. Some people get upset when you bring up tier lists and such, but they exist at least in competitive. The most a person could argue should exist in f is four tiers of champions. Tier 1 being A rank, tier 2 being B rank, tier 3 C, tier 4 D. Anything below those tiers are usually just heroes that are unplayable. Now, in Dota 2, their tiers are handled very interestingly. There is no doubt there are some champions that are better than others and will be picked and banned first. They are the tier 1 champions and you will usually have 2 or 3 of them on your team composition. However, tier 2 champions aren't just brushed off. Many of them are versions of tier 1s that are more specialized or have some strength against a few tier 1 champions, which makes them worth picking over some tier 1s. Tier 3 is where it gets interesting. You often get to see tier 3 champions in game because it is populated by heroes that are hard counters to others or add a lot of power to an evolving strategy a composition is going for. Tier 3s can absolutely destroy teams, but since they're more specialized, they can't just be picked first. Tier 4s are basically even more specialized in situational heroes that sometimes you'll see them if the stars align and they can add a lot to the team composition if that were to ever actually happen. In Dota 2, the tiers are basically meshed with the lines in between them being more of a blur than anything else. However, in League, this is the exact opposite. Because of the rampant homogeny, the tiers are very solid. Tier 1s are so much better than everyone else, including Tier 2, that there is very little reason to play a Tier 2 champion except perhaps you are more comfortable on them or enough bans against a certain role have been made that you have no choice. Tier 3 champions might as well be in the garbage because you will only ever see them as a purely personal pick. 
This issue is exacerbated by both games thanks to the band phase where Dota 2 excels heavily in. I've spoken about it before, but Dota 2 has two band phases and two pick phases. Both teams ban out three heroes, then pick three heroes, then a second band phase occurs where the ba they ban two more heroes and then pick their last ones. This makes the pick phase insanely more dynamic and strategic. You can have power picks in the first phase and then aim to figure out what the composition your opponent is going for and ban to disrupt it. They will now be forced to alter the composition completely or pick alternative picks to continue on with their strategy. Either way, this gives lower tier champions a chance to exist in the game. Fun fact, not banning anything has sometimes proven to be a legitimate strategy since it throws enemy teams off balance and, hilariously enough, a team composition composed of pure tier 1 heroes can sometimes not even be a good composition since it has no aim and focus and can be crushed by a more strategic team. It can also cause the enemy team to panic because now that these tier 1 champions have not been banned, they have to make the decision whether or not to pick them and abandon their old strategy altogether and try to make one up like in the few seconds they have now, or leave them and go with their original strategy but now risk their opponents being able to pick all of them. It's such a devious tactic and it could backfire but it could also just absolutely destroy the enemy team in the champion select. In League, we just have the ban phase and pick phase and both teams barely have to alter their team compositions or strategy because the worst that can happen is someone picks or bans the champion they wanted and now they have to make an alternative tier 1 pick. Sometimes one team will go for some ban phase tricks, but they are very rare. Speaking of the ban phase, the Juggernaut update had one of the most unfair situations for banning. At that time, Darius and Mordekaiser were so insanely powerful that whoever could pick them would pick them immediately. However, the team with first pick did not need to ban them because they had first dibs. This created the awful situation in which team 2 had to waste 2 bans taking these champions out every ban phase or they'd have to face one of them. That was a very dark time for competitive. The Juggernaut update was such a mess and it was so boring. The thing is, I still watch competitive League of Legends every now and then, mostly just to gather information, but my god, it's such a dull affair now. I think it's come too far in this direction that the champion situation can't be fixed, but perhaps having better bands will ease the situation. Anyways, tell me your thoughts since this is a topic I greatly, greatly care about and I think about a lot. Tell me in the comments below. This channel is supported by my sponsors, Crunchyroll and Loot Crate. Check out the description below for links to the websites. Signing up for any trials, including Crunchyroll's free anime trial, greatly supports my channel. Also remember to give the video a like to support the channel and subscribe if you haven't yet. I've also made a Patreon now and if you wish to support me through that medium then I welcome it.